tragedy that has hit the Utah sports world hard. Utah running back Ty Jordan, just 19 years old, killed by self-inflicted accidental gunshot. He recently earned Pac-12 Freshman of the Year honors. Now Jordan was home in Texas for the holidays. Denton, Texas police confirmed this morning that a man had died after accidentally firing a gun. And then hours later, the university released a statement that confirmed the news that Jordan had sadly passed away. Pretty gut-wrenching, you know, I mean, it's uh, it's been a crazy year and uh, it's just like, here's one more thing that's happened, another sad thing to happen. The morning of the 26th, we found out about Ty Jordan's passing. Um, the team was notified, you know, we, we got a message from Jeff Rudy um, at the time and he sent a message that we lost Ty and they passed. It was like, this can't be real. Um, you know, you'd just been with him. You'd just been with him. You'd just seen him do amazing things on the football field. You knew the type of kid he was. All over social media, there's been an outpouring of support for the Jordan family over the loss of Ty. And it's not just University of Utah fans either. Football fans from across the state are devastated after hearing the news. Ty was probably one of the most talented dudes I knew. You know, I can, and I could tell uh, from the moment that he got on campus. Incredible talent. He wasn't the tallest kid, you know, 5'7", but he was thick, 195, 200 pounds, uh, blazing speed, 10, 500 meter guy, and that was his best asset. Football was everything for him. He talked about he wanted to play football at a college level. You know, he that was his dream. I grew up my whole life uh, wanting and dreaming to, to be a college athlete, and now I'm here. Kindergarten, no later than first grade. A Pee Wee coach, I guess he saw us at um, a grocery store or something, approached us and was like, hey, you have a pretty active kid. I seen him around the way with my kids, and have you ever thought about putting him in football? First time he caught the ball, he kind of like stood there and looked over at his mom like, what do I do? Like, just run. <laughs> And that was the start of the touchdowns. It was sensational. It was like a dream come true, you know? For him to be on national television, for everybody to see like this masterpiece of a little brother I have, like it, it just brought like this, this, this like satisfaction to my heart. A fierce competitor, but once it was done, oh, he was ready to enjoy you. He was ready to enjoy you and for you to enjoy him, to laugh with him, to give him a hug. You know, I just I just think about like the, the interactions that we had, you know, uh, just the small jokes, the giggles, you know, um, and then just just his his smile too. incredible personality. Um, smile that would light up a room. Uh, he had an aura about him and a presence about him that uh, just made everybody around him happier. He was his personality was infectious. His, his smile does still live. When you look at pictures, it's like he's still smiling. He's still smiling. It's amazing. His smile is everything. He has a legacy. I'm happy for him for that. He built up enough in him to make a legacy for himself. I mean, I couldn't ask for more. The kids at one point will either do one of two things. They're either going to just float through and just be here, but a shell of themselves, or they're gonna say, I'm not going to let this define me. I'm not going to let this define us. This will be something that we can build off of. It could have either gone, the team kind of, you know, goes into shambles or it stays together and becomes stronger. And I think we went with option two on that. We knew we had to continue on and we knew that we were going to dedicate the upcoming season to him. Everyone, everyone was working, you know. Um, everyone also had that belief that we could win that championship. I saw guys that I hadn't seen before standing, standing in the film room, doing just really just committed. And you saw the energy, you saw, uh, just the change in the culture uh, from the whole team, and you just saw a full commitment, and I think that's what was special. 
you could see the team start to unify and start to bond and start to connect and the chemistry build. And you could just see everybody supporting each other and uh, leaning on each other and really coming together as one. And that's, you know, as a football coach, when you have that going on, uh, you know you get a chance for something special. So we worked that off season. We uh, grinded so hard and we got to a position where we thought we were gonna, you know, win the Pac-12 uh, Pac championship this year. That's what our plan was and that's what we wanted to do for him. And I think a lot of it had to do with the coaching staff and the leaders on the team. Uh, Cam being probably the most vocal. It wasn't that hard because the, the, the team kind of just came together and really just focused on getting through everything that we needed to get through together. And it made it easier because it made, it made it feel such like a family that, that you know, that, that, that's your brother next to you and, and you know that you're coming in here to work and, and but you can also just lean on them if you need that, if you're, in, if you're having that moment of weakness. And, and that's, that made it easy just having the team band together so strongly and, and just being there, just that made it, that made it easy for everyone. Yeah, it was a it was a focus, a, re, a, a refocus to the team. The team found something that brought them closer together, and they had something to look forward to in the fact of they knew they wanted to honor Ty. You know, we had the new stadium opening up and finishing. We got to see it in construction every week when we played. <laughs> so it was nice to have that kind of as, as bright spots to keep looking forward to, you know, for the 2022 season. The guy right there, the guy, best player I have ever played with to this day. To this day. I feel like everyone knew what we could accomplish and what the goal was and all the guys that chose to come back and all the senior leaders we had, all the guys who have been playing for a long time, everyone had one common goal and that was to win the pack. Utah fans, good afternoon. And welcome inside of Rice Eccles Stadium for the beginning of the 2021 college football season. That first game was just electric. To get out in pregame, to see the seats filled, not to have crazy cardboard you know, cutouts and fake people, but real people yelling and cheering. That was, that was so much fun. Playing in front of a full Rice Eccles this year has been unbelievable. This place is rocking. Everybody's ready to go. As Utah opens up the 21-2021 campaign against the Weaver State Wildcats. And the kickoff in Pac-12 football is back. Man, that first game, I think, is when I first realized, like, this is going to be something special. So they'll have to settle for a field goal. Preseason All-Pac-12 kicker Jade Redding on just inside the left hash. Kickoff. And Noyes sends it to the goal line, and Shahid, who is dangerous, has a hole, and he does! Touchdown, Weaver State! And that will not make Kyle Whittingham happy today. That is a 100-yard kick return for Rashid Shahid. Two tight ends, two wide receivers here for Utah. Brewer surveys, throws, back of the end zone, up, punt, touchdown! It right where only Kincaid can catch it. Oh, that's a beautiful play. And Redding, plenty of leg behind that one, and it's 13 7 Utah. Third down and 14. Wildcats 0 for 3 on third down. It'll be a four man Utah rush as Barron drops and surveys. He's going to roll out to his right. Putu Tau chasing Barron down the field, looking, throwing. Knocked in. Intercepted. Devin Floyd made an acrobatic. Gives again Tavion Thomas to the five, to the end zone. Touchdown! Touchdown! Tavion Thomas! Britton Covey to the outside. Britton Covey looking for a wall and a block back to the inside to the 50, to the 45. He's got a wall, 35! It was awesome. Uh, we just, it was the first game that we had played in our newly expanded stadium. Survey, survey, sprints out to the left. Brewer, end zone, caught. Touchdown! Um, and really, the, the highlight for me was the, uh, the video between the third and fourth quarter, the, the Ty Jordan video that was so touching and such a, such a uh, great tribute to him. So today, we will have a moment of silence and ask that each and every one of you rise to your feet and let your voices ring from the mountains up to the heavens in 
in a moment of loudness, electricity, and joy in honor of the late, great Ty Jordan. fans responded, it was, it was incredible. We have an advantage here at Utah, we just do, with, with our fan base and how uh, enthusiastic, energized they are, how passionate they are about our team. We just, we have that advantage and uh, it shows up on a yearly basis. Here comes the blitz, Barron pumps one, scrambles to the outside, tripped and take it down! Got him. It matters. It matters as a coach. You can feel it. It gets you excited. Let's go, Z! And it's your corner man. Red zone tonight for Utah. Scored on five of the six previous. Here's a turn and a give again to Thomas. Thomas to the ten. Thomas to the five. Thomas on his feet. Diving to the end zone. Touchdown! What an effort by Tavion Thomas. And it really is a great night to be a Ute here in Salt Lake City as Utah wins it by a final score of 40 to 17. I have just cherished every moment, you know, it's the new renovations have made the sound echo even more and uh, we've had some pretty fun games and experiences. Coach Whittingham has always said that you're going to face adversity and um, you never know when it's going to strike, when it's going to hit. Sold out crowd at LaBelle Edwards Stadium for this Utah rivalry. The Utes out of the Pac-12 against the Cougars. First time in more than a decade, BYU beats Utah, and they beat them. That was not a loss for Utah. That was a win for BYU, 26-17. They won in every aspect of the game. And for me, the most surprising aspect of the game was Utah getting kind of pushed around and bullied and big boyed. Utah's point of the season, the offense, I don't think, has looked fluid, consistent, it hasn't looked like, you know, I'm sure the coaching staff thought it would look coming out of spring and coming out of camp and naming Charlie Brewer the starter. Coming in motion. Blessing end zone. O'Toole has got it. What a catch, Connor O'Toole. It's the ground to review. The ruling on the field has been changed. Oh, to an incomplete it's pass. over. The game is over. San Diego State wins in triple overtime. What made up? Uh, I think more than anything, I was kind of just frustrated, just because I know our team is at a higher level at least, and you know we we couldn't really figure it out. Well, you felt just disgusted. You felt as a coach, I'm not I'm not doing a good job. I'm not getting the most out of my players. I'm either not preparing them in a way that they needed to be prepared. I'm not doing the very best I can do. Well, the season was. It, the rough start was interesting because I knew what we were capable of and the coaches knew what we were capable of and we had been preaching that to the team. Mentally I would say we all knew that we could accomplish what we set out to accomplish, but something had to change. You just, you just keep fighting, you just keep swinging and you come to work every day and you, you know, Yes, you have to hurt. The hurt has to drive you, uh, but you also have to move forward. And, and you can't let past failures determine how you know the next week is going to go. You can't lose from the previous game, if that makes sense. After that second loss to SDSU, we all met as a team. We had a players-only meeting, and all the guys who had something on their mind just spoke their piece. And I think getting, out, getting that out there was really good um, for the morale of the team because everyone knew what was at stake, everyone knew what we could accomplish. Obviously you don't want to have those games, but if there was a time to have those games, it was that time of the season. It's exactly what we talked about is that, hey, as disappointed as we are, as bad as we feel, as upset as we are, it had nothing to do with what we were out to accomplish, had set out to accomplish. It was just Coach Whittingham's mentality. You just keep fighting, and that's who we are, and that's you know how the kids responded. Just you have to believe, and, and it has to start somewhere, and just we got to get the ball rolling. And, and I kind of just 
wanted the team to be successful, so I, I took whatever role I had to take and just tried to make the most of it, really. Utah fans, good afternoon and welcome inside of Rice Eccles Stadium and homecoming here at the University of Utah. It's the use of the Washington State Cougars under sun trend skies. All right, let's do this. Grab it on three. Grab it on three. One, two, three. Grab it on three. Backpedals to pass. Again, looking down the field. He'll be hit and taken down. Junior Tafuna. Coming right Despite up. being one and two, we haven't played one conference game. We want to be conference champions. We can seize this moment and we can still capture what we came here to do this year. But it starts against Washington State. Kick is away. It's end over end and it is good. And then Thick Boy 7 comes to fruition and everyone discovers who he is and uh, I think the rest is kind of just history. Second down and ten, passing down here for Utah. Rising in the gun, Kai Bernard with it. Cam's going to keep it out on the edge. 25-30, 35-40, 45-50 and out of bounds in Washington State territory. And there's a Utah 19 yard line. Pistol formation this time for Jared Garantale. Action throw, intercepted! Picked off! That'll be Karani Reed. Throwing it deflected and almost intercepted by Justice. Yeah. Good hold. The kick is away and the kick is no good. Uh, Washington State game, we played terrible. Like, we had seven, seven fumbles, seven, eight fumbles in the game. I actually scored my first college game, but I still played terrible. Wyndon Jackson. Jackson in the gun. He's going to keep it himself. And into the end zone. Touchdown. Ball comes out. But he had broken the plane first. That's a, touchdown. That's a Utah touchdown. First career. He does more in a battle of the wills than second half. Period. Who wants it more? Next to Garantano. Garantano backpedals, looking, surveying, stepping, firing down the middle. Caught at the five and into the end zone. Touchdown. Deshaun Stribling. Utah going with tempo now here. Second down and eight. Play action roll. Cam rising. Lots of time. Taking a shot down the field. has got a man. Caught. Dalton Kincaid! A scrimmage. Washington State crowding the line of scrimmage. They give it to Pledger. He's got the second level 30. Stutter step 35. He's into the open field 40. 45 50. 45 40. 35 30. 25 20. And down to the Washington State. 15. Pledger straight ahead. 15. 10 5. And he'll walk it in. That's a touchdown. TJ Pledger. 20 yards. Garantano. Pressure coming. Tripped up. Goes down. Sack number two. This is it, Utah fans. As it gets loud at Rice Eccles. Fourth down and eight. What will Utah do? Here they come. Garantano steps, fires outside. Intercepted by Clark Phillips. 35, 30, 25, 15, 10, 5. It's a house call. It's a pick six. And it's a Utah win. And our final score here today, Utah 24. Washington State 13. It is certainly a great day to be a Ute. And great Starting to great, finishing, you know, not so great. To start slow and finish strong, it's just a metaphor for life. It is certainly a great day to be a Ute and great to get that first Pac-12 win here at home. People started on our bandwagon at the beginning of the season and then kind of jumped off. And it really helped us focus on each other. first tonight, a DFW student athlete playing college football in Utah, killed in a shooting early Sunday morning. Now, if this sounds familiar, it's because it's happened before. 21-year-old Aaron Lowe is the second University of Utah football player from North Texas to die from gunfire in the past year. After the game, you know, I was walking out the, the locker room and I seen Aaron. He had this big smile on his face. We was walking from the stadium and we was walking to the car, and I was talking to him. He had a picture of Ty in his hand, and I was, and I was asking him, I was like, where you get that picture from? He was like, oh, this is me and Ty, old learning specialist. Um, she she gave it to me after the game. And I'm like, oh, okay. And usually when me and Elo like, separate and go different places, we'll hug each other 
hey, I love you, bro. I'll see you later. But this time we didn't. The Utah football team dealing with another shooting death after Aaron Lowe was shot and killed last night at a house party in Salt Lake City. Hours after celebrating the Utes win over Washington State. Devastating news for the Utah football program. It's still grieving the loss of Ty Jordan, who died of an accidental shooting in December. Aaron and Ty were high school teammates in Texas and close friends, which is why Lowe was voted by his teammates to be the first recipient of the Ty Jordan Memorial Scholarship. It just felt like any other typical night after a game. And Dalton Kincaid called me and told me, uh, Coach, some of our players were at this party and Aaron got shot. I said, Aaron Lowe? I said, Aaron Lowe. Uh, I was actually there at the, the party where we was at and it was just a horrible feeling. You know, when you get phone calls or, or text messages around 2 a.m., um, there, you know, it's either really good news or really bad news, and this is the kind that just, you know, devastating. It, it was devastating. It, take, it takes you to your knees. Aaron was, you know, Aaron was a brother. Uh, he helped me out when I got on campus. Like, literally, he was like a big brother to me. Coach McDonald came. Freddie Whittingham came, and we just cried with every player until 25 boys showed up. To fathom this heartbreaking news in the midst of the team already grieving the loss of running back Ty Jordan. We had a meeting and we talked about just what we need to do and and how we need to go out there and do it for those that can't. And, and Ty and Ayla were, were, were the motivators and kind of just took their approach on things and just, you gotta, you gotta go in there with a smile and go put your best foot forward each and every day and that that's that their their energy their their focus and everything kind of just fed through the team and everybody bought in and really really wanted to su to succeed for them